Our next guest has some fantastic ideas to change the way we look at food and to reduce waste. That's happening in today's Daily Dish. I'm so here for this. We talk about this all the time on City Line. So hello, Joshna. Welcome to you. So happy you're with us today. Now, you are a chef. You are working to improve this relationship we have with food and the ideas around hospitality and sustainability. So tell us what that all means and tell us about yourself. Hello, Tracy. It's great to be here. Uh, I'm a chef, uh, author, and activist. And as you said, I'm really, really interested in, in rethinking the way we cook, uh, purchase, and serve food in our public institutions. I am sure everybody uh, watching has either been in the hospital or visited someone they love in the hospital or dropped your kid off at university or seen the kind of dismal food service that is offered there and, and I'm sure has just had a lot of questions about why it's so bad. You've got a recipe uh, that I want to get to right now, Josh, and it uses scraps that we would normally yes. throw in our food waste bins. That's exactly it. I am really big up. The, one of the best bits of wisdom that I learned, Tracy, was that the best way to sort of deal with food waste in the kitchen is to not create it at all, mm -hmm. uh, right? To divert it, to pull things from ever hitting the organic spin. And so I've created a recipe here that uses things, uh, we're using kale stems and mushroom stems that would have ordinarily just gotten tossed in the organic spin, but they're perfectly edible very delicious, full of a lot of flavor, and so we're gonna, we're gonna use them. We're gonna prevent those from getting chucked and make a really delicious mouthful of a thing with them. Oh my goodness, okay, you got me excited. How do we start? Got a bit of canola oil that will go in a pan. It's really, really simple. And what I really love about this is that you can make this filling and keep it. It can hang out in the freezer really beautifully, so it's there and waiting, so you don't, you know, if you need to sort of make things in a hurry, uh, this kind of stuff is ready and available for you, which is very, very exciting. So, in vegetable oil, I'm going to add some chopped up onion, uh, and we're just gonna saute this until it sweats and gets nice and lazy. Sauteed onion, and we're gonna add some minced garlic at the same time, and really onion and garlic, Whatever you do, you pretty much start with a nice saute of onions and garlic. So we're going to let that soften and get brown, and then we'll add the stems in. I love that you call the onions lazy, but I don't know how they feel about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Uh, just as, and so we're, what we're looking for here is for them, they'll get a bit shiny and they'll get soft and, and, and lazy looking in the pan. <laughs> and that's how we'll know it's time to add the stems in. Now, is there anything you need to do with those stems before you throw them in? Are they going to be bitter? Is there anything you do to, to, you know, get rid of that bitterness? Or you just basically wash them, use them? Uh, that's a great question. So sometimes the very ends of the kale particular are a bit dry and woody, so I trim that off. Mm -hmm. uh, and for the mushrooms, sometimes that's because it's the root where but of the dirt mm -hmm. is. So I just, I actually don't like to wash mushrooms. And I would recommend that you also not wash mushrooms. Mushrooms are really spongy. And so when you wash them, they, they drink in the water from the wash. But then when you go to saute them, they will leach out all of that water and whatever flavor they have with them. So uh, don't wash your mushrooms. You can get a mushroom brush. Or for these guys, what I use is just a bit of paper towel that I rub off because really the important thing to know is that when you're talking about cultivated grocery store mushrooms, they are grown in like the cleanest dirt you can find, okay. right? It's not, like, it's not like it's in the ground outside. It is the cleanest, most hygienic dirt. So it's just about grittiness really in your mouth. Uh, so kale stems and mushroom stems are in. Uh, and it looks like a big, a large volume of things in the pan, but this really cooks down. Uh, and we want it to almost be, uh, almost be like a thick paste, because the, we are, what we're gonna do is put this as a filling inside some puff pastry for a quick little hand pie, quick lunch kind of hors d'oeuvre situation. Okay, so I imagine once the filling is all cooked up, it's going to take some time to cool down uh, before you put it in the puff pastry. So we cook this filling down um, and then we let it cool and I actually have a swap here that's already been cooled uh, that's ready to go and nice and easy. So we're going to go on to actually putting this together. So 
What I have here is a sheet of puff pastry and this is very easily available at all your grocery stores. Quite beautifully, they're giving you a version that is all rolled out right now, which is an even bigger treat to be honest with you, no rolling required. So here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna cut this, this is the sheet, the way it comes right from the store, right? What I'm doing is just cutting it into nine sections. Uh, really, really simple. And then I'm gonna take one little beautiful spoonful of my filling uh, and that will go right on top. And you want to kind of angle it in the center so that this thing can fold over nicely, uh, right? Because we do want sort of a tidy pocket. Now, key to success here is we need to glue this together. So I've got some egg wash and lemon juice mixed up and I'm just gonna use it on the edges and the corners of the pastry because that is essentially gonna be the glue that holds this beautiful thing together. Okay, so we just literally, you don't have to be uh, really, really fussy with this. You just pull them right over, right? And now you see we have a little triangle. This is easily the kind of thing that you can get one of your kiddos involved in if you've got kiddos in your house. Um, and so now we have it on the tray. The one key piece that we have to do is close it, right? So what we need to do is just crimp and, and use the fork tines to really, you wanna really smush that pastry together. Oh. What we need to remember is once the beautiful pouches are made, we wanna brush them really generously with this beautiful lemony egg wash because that is how we get that beautiful sort of golden brown top on this pastry. It's a nice little finisher. Uh, and this is the story with any puff pastry game that you play. Uh, and then this will go into a 400 degree oven for about 10 minutes. And you know it's done when the puff is beautiful and golden uh, and it'll smell, right? You'll smell it and it'll be gorgeous. Here they are. Uh, oh my God, I'm really excited about these. They're so delicious. Josh, now they look amazing. And I want to tell all of our viewers they can find that amazing recipe online at cityline.tv. And I love the fact that you were able to use waste scrap stuff that we would put in the in the waste bin for a great recipe.